I bought a fair few watches in 2023, and in this video, I'm going to show you my favourites. Hello all you watch nerds and welcome back to the Awkward Horology channel, a channel all about things watch related. I enjoy buying watches, selling watches and reviewing watches and generally talking about them. I am no expert on watches though, I am instead a self-confessed enthusiast who is learning more and more about the wonderful hobby of watch collecting every day. So if that sounds like fun to you, well just click on the subscribe box below and enjoy the ride. Today I'm going to talk to you about watches, well more specifically my collection of watches that I have bought this year in 2023 and talk to you about my favourite picks of the bunch. These will be in no particular order but I have bookended this list with the two most expensive watches both at the front and end. Okay enough rambling let's get going. Now to kick off this list we have this stunning GMT from Breitling the Avenger GMT. I sold this watch, but it was due to me losing a little bit of lockdown weight finally, and the watch starting to be a little too big for my wrist. It came on a blue leather strap, which was okay, but I preferred it on the nylon strap from Sniper Bay or a red rubber band from Archer Straps. I'm not a huge fan of Breitling's fitted bracelet, so this was a good fit for me otherwise. Honestly, I think this is a decision that I regret and I will regret more going into 2024, so I may actually rebuy this watch at some point in the next year. Stay tuned. Next up we have the now discontinued Laurier Neptune version 3. Great watch with the 38mm case along with the design cues from the bezel to the acrylic crystal, the dial just screamed vintage. This version has the updated Miyota 9000 series movement and has a drilled lugs making it an absolute strap monster. I did sell this one but it was a reluctant sell, I just didn't wear it enough and I think that's thanks to number 4 on this list. But sticking to number three, I, I bought this one watch for one sole purpose to mod and it was the Solar Multiband 6 G-Shock MW5610 and it's probably the most important mess around watch anyone could have in their collection. Now I have the idea of getting a full metal jacket G-Shock and I just don't want to and it's because of the easily accessible mod kits online and I don't really feel that paying £300 for a bit of metal and the Bluetooth which admittedly I wouldn't really use is worth it. This watch has been modded, it is a mainstay in my collection and I absolutely love it. Why did you sell your Laurier again Chris? Well it's because of the watch at number four on this list and it is all I needed from an affordable retro diver. Enter the Walbrook has been amongst my standout purchases of 2023. For a little over £250 you get a beautiful looking tool watch from a brand name with a history and a design that is inspired by their skin divers of days gone by. Now if you thought that Glasshoot Original who had this design was the only ones, think again. It was a generic design of skin divers from the 60s and 70s. Love this watch. Yes, it's an older Miyota movement, but it has sapphire crystal, a free strap crane with it, and Walbrook has a patented protection case, which in itself is great to see. And I love the gorgeous forest military green that this one comes in. Of course, this one is still in my collection. This VK64 powered chronograph from British microbrand Forzo was a great pickup for me this year too. I bought this from Watch Gecko on one of their sales and I have to say this watch is gorgeous and that's thanks to the cream dial, green accents and the orange second hand. It's an original design but it is inspired by racing chronos of the past of the likes of Takahoya and others but it has some sense of fun unto itself as well. I'd be wearing this one on the Menonese bracelet and found it just like the Woolbrook to be a near perfect summer watch. Another buy from Watch Gecko, and this time it's their in house brand Gekota with the Airstream. I thought it had the best design philosophy of any of their three watches that I reviewed this year, but unfortunately I wasn't a fan of the branding as it was a little all over the place. It seemed to be a military watch with the aim of honouring aviation, but then there was an anchor on the case back and it was decidedly nautical, not aviation and the final felt akin to that of a field watch in between. So it was a little bit muddled, the message. Great looking watch, little muddled. Regardless, I did think it was very well made, but it just couldn't find a permanent space in my collection long term. 
This was a rebuy for me. Not sure why I even bothered selling it in the first place, but this is where I think Timex are at their best. This is the Timex Expedition Chrono. Focusing on the sub 100 pound watches, and this chronograph is a pretty good one for the price. 100 meters of water resistance, jump hour quartz movement, great color scheme, and all put together in a PBD style black dial. This watch is the ultimate underrated cheap analog watch made to take an absolute battering. At its height and before being discontinued by Swiss worry brand and watchmakers mundane, this watch was retailing at a quite frankly ridiculous price of £1,300. However, I found this one on sale in TK Maxx and all it cost me was £145, so of course I had to buy it. This is the Helvetica model and since owning it, and I still don't know why I do by the way, I found myself a little perplexed by this watch. Some days I really, really like it, and other days decidedly less so. I'm not sure, but I think it'll stay in a watch box for a bit whilst I decide what to do with it, as I only really bought it because of the movement. It's either a manual wound Solita or ETA, and at that price, either one is pretty awesome. Now this position was initially tied with a Nintendo watch I bought for a laugh this year, or the Casio Alien watch. Of course, I went for the Alien watch. Love the look of this retro looking watch. It does have a futuristic feel too. This watch is cheap and cheerful. Lots of different models available, so find one of yours that you like and enjoy. I still have this watch in my collection. It is not going anywhere. Finally, we have the Grand Jewel in the collection and that since I bought last month has not left my wrist. I think this watch is absolutely gorgeous. The Grand Seiko. SNGB027. I did an unboxing video last month and I'm going to continue wearing this one over Christmas and we'll be doing a full review of this one in the new year. Amazing specs on this watch. I'm a huge fan of the 9F GMT quartz movement. The mirror finishing, Zeratsu polishing and the satin brush services are absolutely gorgeous. I think this watch is just as well finished as anything from Omega and Rolex. Oh and by the way, the movement hasn't lost one second since wearing it. And I'm not joking. So those are my favorite 10 watches that I have bought for between 2023 20, January all the way through to December this year. What do you think of that list below? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. The Grand Seiko has really taken most of my wrist time since buying it. It has basically not left my wrist unless I've needed to stick the G-Shock on if I'm doing some work outside. Other than that, all the other watches have either been good great or misses and I've had to sort of deal with them as I've moved along. As I said before the Grand Seiko is going to be taking a lot of wrist time over Christmas whilst I get a review repaired for it although it may have to share wrist time with another new watch that's coming in as well that will be here hopefully before Christmas but if not during the Christmas period. Anyway what do you guys think of those 10 watches that I've bought and reviewed for this year. There have been more, I think in total there's been about 15 or 20, but these have been the 10 ones that have stood out the most for me and are definitely worth talking about. Let me know in the comments below. Take care everyone, and if I don't see you before, have a lovely Christmas and New Year.